Help support our coverage with a free account on Privacy, the service that keeps you protected when shopping online. Get $5 to try it now by using promo code QZZ2J. And with Blueberry, the community that gives creators the power to make money, get detailed audience measurements, and host their audio and video. Get a 30-day free trial by using promo code BLUEBERRY004. Okay, and speaking of not personalization of products, <laughs> we have Jill Gilbert here with Digital Health, with the, di- well, with the Digital Health Summit. What is it? Is a good question. Well, I think you're here to tell us that, aren't you? I absolutely can. Yeah. Welcome to the show, by the way. Oh, thank you for having me yes. today. Uh, the, so the Digital Health Summit is a two-day summit within CES where oh. we focus on the entire sort of umbrella that is healthcare and technology converge. Okay. So you were just talking about personalization. Yes. And, mm-hmm. and uh, there is no probably, well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't scoped the whole floor yet, but there's probably no better uh, example than where healthcare is turning, which is personalization. Well, we just had uh, Lumen on the show, and you, you couldn't ask for a more personalized approach to healthcare than what they're doing themselves, you know. So mm-hmm. uh, you're absolutely right. I mean, the ability to, you know, track with our devices now and all this stuff, our, our, uh, our health mm-hmm. is becoming more and more. And, and the ability to, and I don't know why I'm preaching the, to the choir here, because I know both of you know this, but, <laughs> yeah. but uh, you know, and the ability to record all these things and then share it with your doctor or whatever mm-hmm. has never been more available than it is right yeah, now. Yeah, and it's so, so. important. So yep. Yeah, it's re- it, it is important, but I think where we're getting to, which was like the promise of it, is we're now in a place where we're seeing it happen and we're actually seeing true accuracy being able to convey to a physician. Yep. We, uh, wh- you know, I brought some of the trends to talk to you guys about, but um, one of the areas around this idea of like do-it-yourself healthcare, I did, I, mm-hmm. I, made, I made some notes because <laughs> it, is, it is Friday after CES. I want to oh. make sure I didn't forget anything. We were just talking I that we should have had our own here. Yeah, yeah, we're like, yeah. we need a list of things that we love. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, there's been a couple companies here that have, I mean, from the comforts of our own home, things are happening in healthcare. We, I just had an opportunity with one of the companies in our Digital Health Expo area um, on, uh, you're, you're doing an eye exam from your home. Oh, wow. um, Med uh, IQ is the name of that company. Medwand, they, they were all over the place this year and they, and you have this, this device almost yeah. like it's like the tricorder of of Star Trek right I think IQ was on the show was IQ on the show I, I think so too yeah yeah okay it makes sense um, but just you know those are two really good examples of something that you're doing some diagnostic of some sort right. at home right and it's it is more available it is more available and um, Medwan in particular is something that you know speaks to your doctor so mm-hmm middle of the night yep. or can do something accurate that you know this the level of sensors and the lever of detection is pretty deep so um so that's kind of exciting yeah um, yeah so one of the other big trends that we talked about this year and partly in the summit and also on the show floor was the idea around you know the, the insecurities of consumers around privacy of their records. Yeah. Um, not just the records, their data. The, we had a, an incredible keynote on privacy and security from uh, Phil Duncan Barker from Knock Knock Labs. And, you know, talking about how it's shocking actually to even say it, but that our data, our health data is more valuable than our financial data. So, which is kind of a, a bold it, you yeah. know. I would think when you think about it though the amount of money in health makes a lot of it makes a lot more sense because you know if you're unless you're going to steal somebody's wealth right I mean right. if you're if you're in that space you're a hacker and you want to steal somebody's wealth that's one thing but if you're in the financial business and you make a couple percentage points on somebody's million dollars it's not a lot of money right yeah. right but if you know about a person's health and you can get in front of a cancer or whatever, mm-hmm. that is worth tens and hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, we did, interestingly, we did a study um, that got announced at the show with Kantar. Kantar is a, a, a data analytic you know, company. Okay. And um, 
they, the consumers, they went out to consumers, and consumers are extremely hopeful about digital health technologies providing them value, but they're very skittish about their protection and their privacy and the ethical use of their data. So where do you see that going? I mean, do you see something in the horizon about protecting our privacy? 100%. Okay. 100%. I mean, it's going to happen. Is it blockchain? Is it... It's going to happen. I am not the expert, but for these technologies to truly, you know, proliferate, uh, you know, be pervasive and be impactful... This this has to happen. Like this this has to happen. So well, and there's it will. always there's always this process of shaking things out a little bit, right? And I think that's where we're at with some of this stuff right now. We were talking a, a couple of days ago on the show about 3D printers and how they've kind of grown up over oh, the last yeah. five or eight years here, right? Now, I mean, now we're starting to print joints, and and I I interviewed a company who did their first knee here uh, not so too long cool. ago. So cool! I wish so I cool. could have seen that one. Yep. They sc- they scan you and get an exact scan of your of what you need for a replacement and then they print it and put it and put it in you right so instead of choosing from three or five or seven different sizes mm-hmm. and then they try to force this in mm-hmm. right or whatever or your hip or whatever it's perfect yeah that is i yep. mean 3d printing is very exciting yep. you know that we were joking years ago the 3d printing our liver and yeah. you know <laughs> it was like little yeah. parts we change out yeah. the new lego yeah. piece that comes yeah. in and now here yeah. we are yeah, Here no, it's, it's it's happening amazing. and it's happening. It's it's highly beneficial for you know with third world countries where people have you know don't ha- don't have access right. right. Um, aside from you know our country, well, it will 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 be readily available. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, my prediction is that in ten years, the organ transplant donor list will be ten percent of what it is right now. So. That's what I'm saying. So <laughs> that 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 that, yeah. that would be amazing. that would be amazing. So 120,000 yeah. people waiting for life-saving organs right now, and I, I expect that to be around 10,000 in 10 years. So well, the interest in healthcare is it's explosive. It is it's explosive. We had I re- I want just just to share with you guys the 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 types of of uh, people that are speaking that want to speak on our stage about. Healthcare, it's it's moving into celebrityville, right? Mm-hmm. So you have someone like Katie Couric, you know, founder of Stand Up to Cancer, who actually led two sessions this year on my stage. One around navigating the healthcare system. Another one highlighting two crusaders in digital health. Um, I don't know if you guys had a chance to see the sleep number. Uh, bed area, but we had. I think one um, of our members did get a chance yeah. to go over there. A very a smart, <coughs> very smart bed that has a lot of incredible um, uh, tracking yeah. and and analytics built mm-hmm. into it. And so we had Shelley Ibach, their CEO, on the stage with Katie Couric, oh, um, wow. and Dr. Oz, um, who has been a. a co-founder, I don't know the exact title, but co-founder of Sleep Score Labs, mm-hmm. um, did a whole keynote around um, sleep tracking data being beneficial and not uh, being beneficial to precision medicine. So now we're talking about how are we incorporating all of this sleep data and sleep tracking information that we're getting and using it to help physicians treat their, treat their patients better. So it's, the interest is there. Mm-hmm. And for the first year, we had Mayo Clinic actually come and talk about how they're using voice tech. So I just saw Google Voice everywhere mm-hmm. and yep. Alexa yep. and the whole thing. And they're like, we, this is very promising for healthcare delivery. So yep. it's, you know, it's like gurgling under the, <laughs> the surface yep. and, yeah. and we're ready. And it's like oozing out. I mean, it's it. It's being used already. We yeah. know this, but um, I think some of the most exciting developments are going to be happening from na- this next decade, 2020 plus. Yeah, definitely. So, and what is your role, like, overseeing get, all of this? I, so I get to produce the summit, which is, you know, a ton of curation and listening and developing uh, topics that are highly relevant. A lot of these companies come here and they have amazing technology, but the stories are very important. So I sort of listen to it very differently when I work with them 
and help shape the topic to make it relevant because we strongly believe that the consumer needs to know about this. And because this is a very heavily attended show by the media, mm -hmm. if I can speak to them, the attendees will be interested, they will write about it, and it will trickle down to the consumer. Amazing. So my role is helping shape it, and then I get to MC the program. So that's <laughs> I love the, that. Hence my scratchy voice for you today. But I get to We're do all that yeah. and, and yeah. really partner with these companies on, you know, why are we at CES mm -hmm. versus any other show? Why is this show important? And so we've we've spent the you know, I've been doing this for ten years now. So this is my ten year anniversary. So amazing. It was great. Yeah. But thank you for asking. Well, thanks for what you do. I mean, you're, you're certainly moving the ball forward every year yeah, with this. Sure. So, and, and it's it's so important to so many people. Well, we try our best, and we we honestly, um, I think one of the exciting parts about being here at CES is not only that healthcare gets to show off what they're doing, but there's this just natural sort of. Um, Co you know, meeting of each other. There, everybody, industries are crossing over because so many people are interested in health. So we're seeing this huge crossover, and uh, people are partnering, yeah. and and that's really exciting. So healthcare is sort of weaving its way into automobiles and weaving its way into our refrigerators, and we, you know, mm -hmm. so it's kind of cool. But Very thank nice. you. All right. Thanks well, for having me. If, if people wanted to find out more information yeah. about what you're working on and what you're doing, where can they go? Um, so um, my personal handle is at Gilbert Guide, G-I-L-B-E-R-T-G-U-I-D-E. And that's on Twitter? On Twitter. Okay. And um, Digital Health Summit is also on Twitter, DH Summit. And, um, yeah, those are the best places. I'm also on Facebook. And okay. My name's Jill Gilbert, so you okay. saw me. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thanks so much. Thank you so much it's for your time. good seeing you this year. Hopefully Absolutely. we'll see you again next year. I hope so. so. All right. Thanks, Jill. Take care. Take care. Bye.